Hi guys, I'm just working a little bit of metal up here. And I've made this big paintless dent removal tool. Not that we're trying to do paintless dent removal here, but I just want to stretch this area here. I had a little bit of a crack at it in the middle here when I first made the tool, and it's brought this area up pretty well. So when we look across it now, this little area above this spot we've got here for our badge is pretty much in the right spot. When we put the straight edge across it, it's the highest point of the tailgate, which is what it should be. But we've got this little low spot just either side of centre. So if I can get in there with this tool and use this area here, I can work a bit of material up here and just stretch it out a bit and bring it up close to what we want. It's a little bit high. And I made this with a few spots in here that we can just adjust this little foot up. And the foot I am hooking onto the reinforcing rail in the tailgate, just so that it'll hold it at the right height. And I can always drill a few more holes in it if I have to, to um, drop it down. look up here that's where we're pushing it's just in this area there so we want to just raise up some metal so there's a little divot we're creating where we're stretching the metal another one beside it just work our way across and we'll get a bit of material there and just raise our low areas up we get a few little high spots, we can tap them down again, but we just want to stretch these areas out. Now we want it a little bit higher up now. And the other thing I can do is I can prop a piece of material just over the pointy end to spread the load out of it. So if we put a little piece of sheet metal on that and clamped it in there, we wouldn't wind up with this little crease, we'd wind up with pressing an area. But we'll do this in a series of passes, and we'll see what we've got. But I think it's all going to work pretty well. Now that's coming up. So we've still got, I think this is probably a little bit high in here, but it doesn't matter at this stage because when I modify the tooling to press that little recess in there, we're gonna be clamping all this up again. All I'm trying to do at the moment is just try and pull a bit more metal up into these areas where the shrinkage has happened from where we've pulled this piece up in the middle. And it all comes back to that staying in control of the panel. So I've stretched it where I've got these two lines that are coming through now. I think we'll do another pass just in here and a couple of little spots in there and we'll call it good enough and then we'll get on to pressing the centre back down for our lion to sit into. Say we've sorted this area in here, I just want these little spots down the sides here. If we get them tidied up a bit, we'll move back to our other tooling. I'm going to call this as being good enough now. I've stretched enough material up where I've pushed these lines in here to give myself something to work with later. Hammer and Dolly is going to tidy all this off, but for now I want to move on and do the rest of the work on this area in here. Now doing this stretching at this stage is to stay in control of the metal. 
we had a little bit of a low, we had a little bit of a high in the middle where it had to play before. If we'd left it like that, they could have reached the point where it would have been a lot of work further down the track to get it right. So doing this now makes it easier later on. So I've made another piece to go with our tool. I'll just grab that and show you. Now, this is a piece of two millimetre plate and I've machined it round, I've curved it to match the line and we've got tops up that way somewhere. There we go. So it's basically two millimetres bigger than the line. So there's enough room that we can press up a little lip to go around the edge of it and there's enough room for the paint to sit in there so the badge isn't going to wear the paint when we put it all together. So that has got to go on here and push back in. So to make that happen, I've got to modify the rest of our tooling. So this is the disc we made in the last movie that comes up from behind and pushes out. So what I'm going to do now is grab a strip of two millimetre material and weld it all the way around the edge so that it's poking forward. And then we'll grind it back so that it's two millimetres higher than what this face is here. And then we'll just grind a little chamfer on the edge of it. And then when it comes up from behind, we'll bolt it all back into our tooling. We'll put this plate on the front and then we're going to sandwich our metal so that it'll push this one inboard from where this line is around the edge. So hopefully it'll all work. This is a bit of 1.6 I found behind the guillotine in the offcut pile, so I was pretty lucky with that. It's near enough for what I want. It's too wide by a long way, but because our disc is actually curved from the edge, if I roll this up into a circle, I can sit it on, on the lowest point, get it welded there, and then where I work it around to the high points in there, I can just grind the piece of metal away as I go. And then we've got plenty of material we can chop off later. So that's easy peasy. But for now, I'll just make it into a bit of a circle. Okay, where's our bit of metal? How's that for a bit of scrap? We're almost the right size, so I can fill in that gap with a piece of something else that'll work. So now we're going to start joining it together and see what we get. Okay, so that's got to prop up on that side there. We're going to weld in from this side here. Big welders are very good for doing big welds. So here we're doing a little bit of skinny weld and a bit of fat weld on this plate on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is turn it down really low and I'll concentrate the heat on this plate here. But I'm purposely leaving all this extra material up here to soak the heat up so that the weld's not going to just what are you wanting to burn holes in it all the time. So we'll rip around there, weld that up and then we'll leave it sit around and cool down by itself and then we can um, come back, fill this little hole in, and then we'll grind him up ready to go. And pretty much, um, I'll probably just grind it because we've got the shape already in the tailgate. We just need this edge around here so the weld's smooth, it doesn't have to be exactly round. And we'll rip most of this material off the height wise just with a cutting disc, and then we'll put a bit of two mil in there and grind it back to that. And so it shouldn't take a lot of work to make that all happen. So we'll see how we go. Big thing is we want the bit that pokes up to be circular. So we don't want any little lumps and bumps in it. We've still got a spot there that needs hammering down. But if we can clamp it in the vise. It should pull it in pretty well. So we'll weld a bit 
and then turn it a bit and work our way around it. Because of the wire size, we're not going to get it down real low. I think it'll run on that one, but the wire speed's going to be well down on it. So might have to just fiddle with it a bit until we get something. So this one's our voltage control, this one's our wire speed, but like we say, we're going to be down pretty much at nothing. Might be a little bit hot there yet, might have to drop it back another one, but we'll see what happens. Just had to change the way I was thinking about this, because what actually happened was, got it set up in the vise, put the earth clip on, and because it's such a big welder with a big heavy earth clip, it was pushing my piece of material that I want to weld on down out of alignment and the weight of it was dropping it down. So I've just put a bolt and a nut on there. I'll put the earth clip on the nut on the bottom and that way I should be able to clamp it in the vise somehow and be able to get my piece of plate starting to be welded on there. Got to be able to change things on the fly to make it all work. I've shot myself in the foot again already, I have. Bolt wants to be in the other way out because I want to weld from the opposite side. Could be one of those days. It is the weekend. Okay. That can go on there. We've still got to have enough room for our plate to fit in there. Right, yeah. Right, eh? Let's see what we can zap on there and how it looks. We want a bit more current. We've got a cold weld, it's actually building a big beater weld, but it's not really burning into the metal. So, and I can tell by feeling it, the amount of wire it's spitting out, it's just not being zapped in hard enough by the actual amount of current I've got there. So we'll just weld a bit more and see what we've got. Bit of an ask for this welder to be doing a fiddly little job like that. That's a bit better. Might actually just hot him up a little bit more. work. That will work.
hot, 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 hot. Last little bit. Okay, that'll do. While our little lion pressing tool is cooling down, we can look at our making a little tray for the number plate recess. So I've pre-cut these and started tidying them up and I've ground a couple of the corners, but what I'm going to do is just sort of bolt them together the other way up and pick on the corners that I haven't ground and match them up to the ones I already have. And that way we'll get the same corner on all of our pieces. So I've, quiet. I've drilled it where the number plate bolt holes go and that'll lock them in place. And when we actually bolt it back together to do our hammer form, we can drill the holes through for where the number plate will bolt onto it. And then we can use the edge here to work on and nothing's going to move. So if we put him in this way around, find a couple of screws, which I should have left conveniently here somewhere. Should be able to make it all work. That's given us a pair of hammer forms that have pretty much got the same corner in every corner. So now we've just got to cut a piece of plate to go in there, drill a couple of holes in it, sandwich it through between this and we can just roll the edge around and we'll have the little recess that sits right in the back of our tray for our number plate to go in. This is where it starts getting exciting. So we're going to want that to be 430 by 180. No, hang on, 170. So 430, 170. been waiting to open this. This turned up a few weeks ago. Otto from Queensland sent it to us, just grateful for the help we've given him on his project. And it's sandblasting consumables and bits and pieces. So it's pretty cool stuff. Thanks, mate. I really appreciate this. We've never had gifts come from YouTube people before. So this is a bit exciting for us. Wow. So we have got the valves that we wear out all the time on our blaster. So that one fits our, regulates our flow at the bottom of the pot and also the handpiece uses that size and the half inch one's the air intake size. So that's pretty cool. Thank you very much. And a few fittings. Wow, look at that. This is the sort of stuff that just wears out all the time with the stuff going through it. So yeah, thanks mate, really appreciate that. And wow, look at these, awesome. These are the tear-off lenses for the blasting helmet. Well, wow, they're going to keep me going for a while. Look, thanks so much, mate. I really appreciate that. Awesome. That is just so good. Wow. Okay, let's bend some metal. So, we're going to put that on there. Yeah, I've given myself 10 millimetres all the way around. So, what we'll probably do is just set the... Um, combination square to 10 mil and just pick up two sides and that should center it pretty well and then I can just punch a couple of holes through and we'll be in action. So grab a drill and a drill bit 
and we can make this happen. Poor old drill box, it's getting a bit hard to read the numbers on the front. This was a 21st birthday present, so it's done pretty well. Trouble when the chuck doesn't want to undo. Right in front of me. I'm wandering around the shed looking for something that's sitting right in front of me. Okay, metric side. 10 millimetres. So if we have got you. That's him. A little bit of a trim margin on that piece of metal, so it doesn't have to be super accurate. Just got to use that special measurement called ish. a little bit longer because one of them was only just long enough to fit before. All right. Trade you in. Looks like that ish measurement was a bit too ish. Only got about eight mil on that end. Don't like that much. The best laid plans. So, how long have you been doing this for, roughly? should just about go through that, you'd think. Righto. My plan was to put a little plastic nut into the um, hole for the number plate, so that we put a little self-tapper through there, it won't tear the paint up and cause rust issues, so the hole's got to get made a little bit bigger anyway. So no biggie. It's just more embarrassing than anything else. Do a muff up on camera. It happens. Okay.
really heavy shrink in that corner, but we've nearly got him down. Does it matter about that crease? No. Nope. No, that's a nice shrink. Turns out it wasn't a fluke. Get away from me. Okay. Let's 
happens every so often. I've got a bit of weld stuck inside the vise. It's jamming it up. Caught in somewhere. ball of weld slag spit has just um, got stuck in between the vice parts. It's still there. Hopefully it'll roll out the back when it comes back in. Still less stuck in it. It'll be one of these little balls of metal that comes off the welder. There it is, I think. It's one of them anyway. Another one there. So you can do with a birthday. I think from memory, this was a 21st birthday present too. My young brother made this with his own two hands. Feel the love here. Okay. Every so often your vice needs just a little bit of love to keep them happy. This one's a bit overdue. Beautiful. Good as new again. It's got a set of Dawn jaws in it and a Dawn screw and um, nut in the back of it, but the rest of it there, me brother Darren made. Okay, vice overhauled, we can get back to our number plate. Just want to go along here and just smooth the lumps and bumps out because you wind up with this little wave over the top of the former. A couple of the corners could do with a bit more of a tap in.
Right, that doesn't look too bad at all. Just knock him apart and see our number plate in it and see how it looks. Looks like it's a little snug. It's clearly why we put the hole in the wrong spot, so we'll be able to tap the plate out of the inside of it. Right, yo. The moment of truth awaits. Okay, so if we throw that into there, roughly, put that in there, once we paint that black and put it on the back of our car, that should look pretty nice, I'd say. So that's going to be the deepest part of the recess and then the other the outer skin is going to be I'm guessing probably another 50 mil out something like that so I'll have that little two-step approach but I think it's going to look great I've ground up our little disc that fits into our die for pressing this in and I shaped it all up and what I've done is I got a little piece of two mil flat and bent it a bit so it would sit in next to here and then ground all the way around running off my little piece of metal to give myself a little two millimeter ledge. So now this one's going to come through from behind. This one's going to be on the outside and we'll put it back together exactly how we had it before. But hopefully we're going to get this little edge out here to stay where it is and the center part of it to press in. So we'll put it all together and see what happens. Back to being a fun thing. Okay. Okay, it's starting to bite now. So something's happening. As long as we don't just punch a hole in the middle of the tail, okay, we have to start again. Just give him a minute to catch up and let it think about what we want to do to it. It's still moving each time I move it, but if I just let it sit for a minute. Okay. Let's come down tight now. Because we've stretched up this piece around it, I haven't seen any great collapse in these areas around here to how it was before. 
and the line in the middle does have a little bit of a cave and that could just be from the tooling or it could have been just that it needed a bit of stretch that I didn't notice before. Anyway, we'll pull him off and see what we've got. Up. Not quite the result we wanted. So all we've done is just sort of pushed it in a smell. It hasn't gone anywhere near we're doing what we want. So, bit of a crash and burn. Probably where it stopped moving on the spanner was the point where it just bound up and there's too much weight around here. So we might have to just change something to get a bit more exertion. It might be a case of putting two bigger bolts in it as well. So let's we'll see what we can do. As a quick fix. Okay, time to use my own advice and a bit of heat in the panel. Tight. 
Yeah, we've done something this time because we've dropped it back in there again. We'll see what happens now. Same as the first time, where it's collapsed this around here, it's pinched the metal in and turned it into a bit of a nut. Just unscrew it. <laughs> we still got nothing. Okay. Why aren't you playing the game? It's not making my day. Not one little bit. my heart set on that too. Okay. We'll have another crack at it before we pull the pin on this idea. We'll just have to heat it up hotter. I have no idea. Hmm? What if it's not enough gap between... Well, that's exactly what it is, but not enough gap means more pressure. And if we can't put more pressure on, We've got to put um, some heat into it to soften the panel up. So we should have enough in there that it's going to, um, like I say, if we make that a little bit smaller to give it more gap, how much room can we take off that before it's an issue? We can take a mill off it, I guess. Yeah, we can make it a bit smaller. We'll give it a go. Deb's idea. about as far as I want to go. Some people get some stupid ideas.
pulled the gap together than that, I'd say. Killed it. Bring, 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 bring holding spears. Yes, can I have a tailgate for a VYU, please? And then we could start all over again. <laughs> but up here, that one doesn't want to come off anymore. That ain't gonna fly. Oh, we'll try another approach. That's what we've done, so we've pulled the bolt into that. Wow. So that's where the, what's changed. So, that doesn't matter though, because that's behind that other plate. Try something different. accomplished we've put this middle piece down two millimeters lower isn't that enough
not quite the way we had originally planned, but looks like we've got a result. Yeah, that's the big thing with custom car work. If the first idea doesn't work, just have a reassess and a think about it and come back with a bit different approach and you'll get there in the end. So anyway, we'll try our lion in the hole and see what we've got. If we want something a little bit different to what everyone else has got, got to be prepared to come up with a few little bit different ideas. So okay guys, that's what we're after. It's exactly the look I was looking for and it was worth persevering with just to get it right in the end. I've got a little bit of work to do in here. I'll get all that stretched up and hammered up and nice. And then when we come back, we can focus on our number plate recess and get that finished. Got these two little corners to do, which won't be much. That's an easy peasy thing. And if anyone can help me out, I'm looking for a picture of how HSV put the tail light wiring across for the number plate light. And I've looked at VEVF stuff and that's not suitable. The tailgate's just not deep enough to hide them in underneath the edge of here. And someone put a comment through saying it was done on the side on these. So if someone's got a picture, you can flick it through to my email at rob at robshed.com. That would be awesome. Thanks very much. And um, we'll catch you next time. Thanks very much for watching.